here's where we left off after part one. We'd finished forging and we're grinding off our scale. And this is where the parade started with this 3 8 inch thick piece of 1070 steel. Part one includes every hammer blow of forging this sword, so go check it out. Or here's sort of a condensed version if you're too busy. Alrighty, here we go. We'll angle grind off some of this scale and then finish the cleanup on the bell sander. You can see flat spots on both sides of the sword. Those were left thick during forging in case any deep or errant hammer strikes needed to be ground out. Now it's time, however, to work the bevels further up the sword and get rid of that flat area such that the bevels meet in the middle and form a diamond shape. We're going to proceed carefully. We still want a little bit of meat on this thing for heat treatment. Man, the thought of quenching has been anxiety provoking. There's several days of work in the sword and after fullering there'll be even more time invested. This quench is this just sacred magical time for any blade, most considerate the weapon's birth when it takes on the soul. And I've been thinking very carefully about what I want to say in that moment. I mean, it's like choosing the first words your, your baby will hear. We're getting there, but we're going to need to work on these bevels a little bit more. Time for more slow, cautious grinding. Great, so for the most part we have a straight line down both sides of the sword. I'm going to touch it up a little bit more, and then it will be time for a weigh-in. So if you recall from part one, we're striving for an Oakshot 18A sword with a final weight around two and a half to three pounds, hopefully on the lighter side of that. This sword weighs two pounds, 14 ounces now, but no worries. We're going to put a fuller right here and we still got quite a bit of grinding to do after our quench. Never get involved in a land war in Asia. <laughs> what does that mean? Land war in Asia. What is that? Is that supposed to mean that these fullers are going to be my Vietnam? Is you know, is this some sort of quagmire? I mean, come on. How hard is it to hand file in some fullers on a on a sword? We're moving into the valley of the shadow of death. And in death, I mean, what's that about? What do you all know about death? Wait, that was just dark? This is gonna be easy, come on. We're just gonna... Scoopity scoop scop. Scoop that metal out of here with this file. It's be easy peasy, take about an hour. Sound off like you got a pair. What? You're the lowest form of life on earth. That just doesn't seem helpful. You're trying to break me down and build me up again? What? So the Dremel is good at removing marks in this groove from the file, but it creates fairly wavy lines and it tends to jump the lip of uh, the fuller, leaving marks over the bevel. So it's good for touch up, but not for stock removal. It's back to the file. And more filing. And five hours later, one side is almost done. Elias is still out there, Sarge. I'm starting to wonder if 
I'm gonna make it through this. Uh, maybe there's something I can do to speed up side two. The sword is too long for my heat treat oven, or even a bucket of vermiculite or perlite where I would typically anneal something after heating it to critical temperatures. So I've heated it instead to cherry red or subcritical temperatures in the forge for about 10 minutes where I let it cool slowly for another 25 minutes, blasting it intermittently with the burners to slow the cooling, then removed it for air cooling. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. My hope is that this will serve as sort of a quick and dirty spheroidizing cycle and soften the steel. Technically that takes longer, it also needs sort of slower cooling, but again I just don't have a good way to do that. It's quite a bit softer. I'm gonna buy this hide. I need I need to wear stomach skin like a unitard. Yeah, I feel like I feel like I'm starting to see things, yeah. Getting delirious. In the meantime we'll clean this up. So at this point the fullers have taken three times longer than I really thought and they still look wavy and rough. You can talk for this now before you article 15 both your We are going, going into battle, battle against, against a tough and smell! You know that gasoline I, I smell! The whole hill! I will bring you all alive. Smells like... Give me a weapon! Give me a weapon! Victory! You calling that snake and snake and get us some hope for now! I'm a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude. <laughs> <laughs> Those drum sander sleeves made a huge difference. I wish I'd found them earlier in the process. Did I take off half a pound or what? Well, she's as straight as I'll ever get her. After trying and failing, I realized I can't really get a good full-length heat for quenching in my current forge. So, it'll set me back a few days, but I've got to make a sword forge from the broken grill abandoned in our backyard by the house's previous owner. What you see here is the sword being normalized for several cycles. It takes some trial and error to dial in the burners for an even heat, but eventually we get there. Friends, I got some bad news about filming the quench itself. Unfortunately, I didn't time the record button on my high-speed camera very well and missed the first few seconds of the quench. My second camera was set up to film the vice and any straightening that went on. I mean. Look, honestly, I was a little distracted while I was anxiously considering these words of power I was going to call forth in that ceremonious moment of the sword's birth in oil and fire. You know.
Hey friend, can't find your significant other? Put a hot piece of steel in your hand for a time-sensitive one-shot only process in Alakazam! Sounds good. Scale will be removed to check for cracks and allow for better visualization during tempering. Tempering could be done in the sword forge, I suppose, but I'm not practiced at that and so it takes some time to get used to it. So the torch it is. No cracks. I'm aiming for a dark brown or purple. We score some blue spots, but that's okay as you'll see. Overall, an HRC of 50 or so is probably where it should be for this sword. A straw color temper that we're used to seeing on knives is not soft enough for a sword in most cases. That, that would indicate a final hardness in the, in the low 60s, maybe high 50s. A bit too brittle for this application. It skates a 50 HRC file. A 60 HRC file digs in and I lost my 55 file unfortunately. I think we're really close. We're, we're in the neighborhood of where we want it. And we do a little more scale removal, get those oxides from that first temper off, and we found a small warp that will have to correct. I can do that during a, the second temper. Next time we'll do more grinding, get it polished up, fit a guard and a handle. Hey, it's a fantastic voyage guys, thanks for staying tuned. See you soon. <laughs>